to Search the Scriptures. We are on study number 50 in the book of Psalms, and we are covering Psalm 64 and 65 today. So you'll want to get a Bible out and turn to those two Psalms, Psalm 64 and 65. And we're going to try to answer a couple of different sets of questions today. The first one is from Psalm 64. How are the psalmist's enemies described here, and what are the purpose and the results of God's judgment, and what truths should we take to heart and act on when we are in similar circumstances. And then from Psalm 65, in verse 1, the psalmist says that praise is due to God. In the remaining verses, what can you find which moves you to praise God for all that He is and all that He has done? And are the experiences mentioned in verses 3 and 4? Or known to you. And that is the experience of forgiveness of sin. Let's look at Psalm 64 and Psalm 65 together, beginning with Psalm number 64 in the very first verse. Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint. So David begins by complaining to God. Have you ever wanted to complain? Protect my life from the threat of my enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. They shoot for, from ambush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear, and they encourage each other in evil plans. And they talk about hiding their snares, and they say, Who will see it? And they plot injustice and say, We have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning, but... God will shoot them with his arrows, and they will suddenly be struck down. And he will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin, and all who see them will shake their heads in scorn. And all people will fear, and they will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him, and the upright in heart will glorify in him. Psalm 65. Praise awaits you. Our God in Zion, to you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer to all people will come. To you all people will come. And when we were overwhelmed by sin, you forgave our transgressions. And blessed are those that you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are all filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas and the roaring of the waves and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades. You call forth songs of joy, you care for the land and you water it and enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You drenched its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow and the hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. From Psalm 64, then, the first psalm, how are the psalmist's enemies described? And what are the purpose and the results of God's judgment? And what truth should we take to heart and act on when we are in similar circumstances? Well, this psalm opens up by David making it clear that he's coming to God to complain. I know I've done that from time to time. And I've complained about the same thing David complains about. He's complaining about his enemies' relentless attacks upon him. And the attacks that he is addressing here are not military attacks. They're verbal attacks. David speaks of the words of his enemies as being like spears, arrows, and swords. David is asking God to turn the schemes and the slander of the enemy against themselves. What David is asking God for is that God would protect him 
from these words of the enemies finding their target. He's asking God to hide him from these words. You know the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That saying that we try to instill into our children, that's really a lie. Words are every bit as destructive as flying spears and arrows and the thrust of a sword. Words destroy, words wound, and words kill the soul. David was being attacked by the words of the enemy. He was complaining about it. He was asking God for help from it. When we likewise come under verbal assaults and verbal attacks, we have to remember not to lob verbal grenades of our own back in the face of the enemy. It tends to be what we do, but instead we need to ask, ask God to hide ourselves in Him from those assaults, from those words, so that those words wouldn't find their mark. And we need to pray that the slander and the verbal attack of the enemy would be turned around against them. In Psalm 65 first verse he comes out and says that praise is due to God in the remaining verses what can we find that moves us to praise God for all he is and all he has done and there are those experiences of forgiveness in chapter 3 and 4 known uh, to you well when reading uh, this psalm I, I'm really struck by the metaphor of water here towards the end of the psalm it talks about water uh, being used to shape the land and to give productivity uh, to the land. That the shaping and that produce was due to this force of the water that was sent by God. It was God that formed the mountains by uh, the retreating of the waters of the ocean and the cutting of the rivers. And it was water that was sent from God that made the land productive. The one that forgives us of our sin which is the reason that this psalm of praise was written, is the living water, Christ Jesus. Jesus both shapes our lives, like the retreating waters of the ocean and, and rivers shaping the mountains. He shapes our lives, and he makes our lives productive as the rain coming down. When we allow the, his presence, the presence of Christ, to flow in and to flow through us, Wow, wonderful things happen. And the headwaters of that river of his presence are found in the valley of repentance and forgiveness. I hope you're experiencing the forgiveness of God in your life and the presence of God in your life. It takes time, like the shaping of mountains by retreating seas and by rivers takes time to produce crops. If we continue to not give up, let the presence of God flow in our lives, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. If you're on the verge of giving up today, don't give up. You will find a harvest. Hope this study has been a blessing to you today, and may God richly bless the rest of your day.